guys, welcome to Explosive Discharge. Today we're going to be talking about backup solutions. So it was recently announced that a piece of software we both use called Crash Plan, which has been pretty good for backup so far, has been discontinued. Uh, well, sorry, they're going to discontinue it uh, in October 2018. So the sort of objective of this is to find another free alternative to Crash Plan. That uh, we both got quite different requirements. I'm uh, four laptops and one desktop, purely backing up to one. Uh, NAS drive with a four terabyte RAID, um, and Chris, on the other hand, has five local machines that back up to a, a server in house and one remote client, so a backup needs to be done over the internet. So, there's a couple of different types of backup uh, image backups takes a backup of the entire hard drive, so it's really easy to restore your whole computer in the event of like a complete system failure if you drop your laptop and break the hard drive, something like that and file backups which back up only files of interest, so maybe like only your photos and your My Documents folder or everything on your computer, but it makes it a lot easier to just recover one file at a time if you just delete, if you accidentally delete a file or if you accidentally overwrite something, you can just jump in and pull that one file out quite quickly. So it's quite handy to have both. So there's also some different methods of backing up. The first of them is a full backup. Yep, so that essentially backs up everything of interest. So it's a large backup, and takes up a lot of storage space, so you'd usually only do this um, on the install of the program, and then maybe once every month, either monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, something like that. And then you can take a differential backup, which backs up everything that's changed since your last full backup. So it's a bit quicker, because you're only looking at the files that have changed. And then you've got an incremental backup, which is quicker again, because you're only looking at the uh, files that have changed since the last increment has been backed up to the drive. So um, there'll be very small backups in some cases, you know, one document, two documents, maybe not even that. However, that does have a flaw because if one of those incremental backups is damaged, it will actually subsequently damage all of the backups that were made after that one. So our criteria is it needs to be fully automatic. So we don't want uh, sort of family members to have to be starting this application and clicking the run button. Because as soon as you've got that in there, people forget to do it and it's just never going to work. So it wants to automatically run every time you start Windows and have a schedule of when to back up automatically without having to interfere with it. We want to be able to take full image and file backups and we want them to be free as well. So after trawling through sort of tens and tens of programs, we've narrowed it down to three. So we've got Macrium Reflect free. We've got VM Agent for Windows. And your backup. So, Macrium Reflect Free, currently at version 6. Um, it's a small download and then downloads uh, within the installer package. So, um, there are a few options here. Um, you can actually opt to download with or without the WinPE environment, which is given to you in that dialog there. If you go through the install process, uh, there's a pre-entered um, license key. You don't have to enter any registration details, which is nice. Once it's downloaded, it asks you to create your rescue media, which we're going to do now. So this will create an ISO image. So there's an error here. That was actually while it was trying to create the WinPE environment. So um, we did one try again, and it worked the second time. So it's just been a glitch on our part. And there's your ISO image on the desktop. So this is creating the first backup. So ask you um, what sort of compression you want to use, the file size limits, password protection, um, which you can't actually use, uh, or encryption on the free version, um, and some various other options such as power saving. So this slightly quirky um, thing here, you actually have to enter your credentials fairly quickly and click remember um, within a certain time, otherwise the program will have a bit of a, um, a, bit of a nightmare. And then you've got various options here. Um, you mainly want to set this um, your backup type. So you can't do incremental. Uh, you can only do differential or full. So you can use the default settings. Run them. So the initial backup took just over 24 minutes. So, here we go. Misty, Chris's cat. She's looking at some naughty images. And uh, Chris is coming out to find out where she is. Oh, 
So she obviously needs to delete what she's been looking at as quick as possible. So there we go. Does she delete the cat cat image or the, the accounts? Cat image or the accounts? Oh, uh, no. That's it. The account's gone forever. She made a terrible mistake. She's ruined her business. It's okay. She can launch Mac Room up. Browse the latest backup. Mac Room actually um, mounts this image as a, uh, a drive. So you essentially just browse it as if it was a, any other Windows folder. So go to the documents and there you can see the um, accounts. And this can just be drag and drop to wherever you want. So here I am. I've been uh, I've been told about this thing. If you delete the Windows System 32 folder, it speeds your computer up. So I've done that. It seemed to go okay for all of about three seconds, and then it blue screened. So I wasn't particularly happy, as you can see. But it is a good indication that Macrium Reflect will do a, a fairly good bare metal recovery. So you um, essentially have to browse to your network location here. So if you can't actually see it as a, a listed network location, you can actually map a new network drive. Um, as this is full WinPE environment, you do have the capability of doing that. Once it comes up, you select your backup. And then choose to restore image. And then you can set the partitions that you want to actually restore and their destination. And there we go. The restore is done. Windows will reboot. And that's it. The initial boot took a little longer than normal, but um, going forward, everything was fine. Right, so VM agent for Windows. So on their website, you actually have to create an account. Sign up. You can actually put everything, uh, anything in that you want here because you don't have to refer to it later. Uh, the install took a little while. Um, but once it was done, it asks you if you want to do an initial backup, which you probably won't. Then it asks you if you want to create recovery media, which you do. Um, so by default, this saves into your My Documents folder. Then you want to go uh, into Configure Backup. And here it lets you choose between um, entire computer volume or file level. So I recommend doing an entire computer backup or a full backup. And then it asks you if you want to save to local or shared storage. In this case, it's shared. Chris has pointed it to a server with the credentials in, which they will, it will remember. And by default, it will only do one full backup. But Chris has changed that in the advanced settings to do one um, monthly. Here you can change the compression level and encrypt the backup if you desire. So here are some other parameters. You can actually set VM to wake your laptop or PC up, um, but it does need to change your power settings profile. And then you run the job. So it finished at just under 12 gig, took around half an hour, I believe. And here Chris is just sitting down to uh, update his CV because he needs a new job on his ancient Dell XPS laptop. And he goes to save his file like you should do. Oh no, power's gone. Laptop battery ran out, hasn't got a file. So you open VM, you double click on the uh, backup here, which is kind of like a bar graph almost. And then you can do recover files. And it lets you browse the image. And once you restore that specific file, it will save it to the same location it was, uh, it was backed up from. However, it's prefixed with the word restored, so you know the difference between that and the original, if the original is still there. So here's another bare metal recovery example. I'm just walking out to the garage and oh. You can see there I just had a bit of a bad time and smashed my laptop to bits. So this is a good time to demonstrate bare metal recovery with VM. So we've booted into the ISO that was created earlier. You choose network storage. Locate to your shared folder, which in this case is Chris's server. Add the required credentials. You'll find all the backups listed in that location. And then you choose the 
um, backup that you want. So the latest incremental backup will include, obviously, the full backup. You then choose to do an entire backup, and it will restore the entire hard drive. This took just a little over 25 minutes, and then asked you to restore. And on the first boot, VM did have some quirks, and you can see here that Windows struggles to index the files, and obviously these thumbnails have no, uh, sorry, these files have no thumbnails. That is resolved over time with one or two restarts. So we've installed your backup server with all the defaults, so I'm just going to run you through the configuration I've used. So on the server page, you just need to select your backup storage path if you haven't already done that. Uh, put in some sensible values for file backups and image backup intervals. The permissions tab is all completely default, and so is the clients tab. The archiving tab, I haven't set this up yet, but it lets you create periodic, periodic archives. So you can back up every uh, sort of day, week, month, year. So you've got a bit of an archive on top of your uh, sort of monthly or weekly backups. Uh, the internet tab, we've enabled internet mode, and I've used this command that I'll put down in the description to force it to use internet only mode. And that has the advantage of forcing encryption in transport for your backup files. So it'll work completely fine over your LAN, but it'll just use a different mode. And you also need to tick uh, do image backups and do file backups over the internet. Now you can see down at the bottom there's a couple of fields about uh, usage caps. So if you've got a usage cap from your broadband supplier or if you're using uh, a metered connection in Windows 10, uh, I'd recommend just having a little look at the manual for what um, values to use in these fields. Otherwise you can just leave them as default. And the advanced tab is all completely default as well. So you can click uh, add a new client from the home screen and type in a name for the client. And then if you download the pre-configured uh, client installer for Windows, uh, if you're doing all this on the web browser of your new client, it'll automatically set it all up for you. Um, and as soon as you run it, which happens automatically, you can set up what files you want to back up and what drives you want to back up. I'd recommend backing up all internal disk volumes. And then after a couple of minutes of uh, connecting to the server and figuring out it's on internet mode, it'll start the backup. So on to our first backup scenario. So imagine someone's walked into your office and uh, you've got a bit of a rogue employee and they're stealing some change off the desk. And they realise there's a security camera. So they do the sensible thing and they try and delete the CCTV footage to remove any incriminating evidence. But that's fine, you're running your backup. So you can use the web interface to browse through the folders, find your uh, find your backed up file, and then when you click it, it will download through the web browser, or you can click restore folder to client, and it will push all of the files in that folder out to the client. So on to our next recovery scenario. Uh, you've got a, a, a phone line engineer who's forgotten something, left something in his van, and he's put his laptop down. But Dom's leaving for work. Dom hasn't noticed what's in front of his car, and he has uh, caused some serious file loss. Not once, but twice. What are you doing to my laptop, mate? This has got all the confidential files on it from BT. What's head office going to say about this? So this is a good test of the uh, image recovery in your backup. It uses a Linux-based ISO for this. There were a couple of quirks when we first run this. They seem to be fine trying again later. So it seems to be fairly stable. You, uh, When it connects to your backup server, you select what computer you want to restore, select what volume you want to restore and what disk to write it to, and um, it will just automatically restore the whole disk. When it's finished, you can make the drive bootable. If it's on the same computer, you don't really need to, and then restart straight back into Windows. So that's it, that's the restoration done. Right, okay. Let's take it from the top. What did you think of Macrium? Um, it was good, however, my own experience, I managed to make it crash once. Um, so, network log on prompt? Yeah, so <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, when it asks you, if your net, for me, the network attached storage location, if it asks you for the username and password, before I'd even have a chance to put either of those details in, another window had come up asking to, to retry 
or abort, and neither of them did anything. I had to just force close the software and start again, which is why I mentioned that you have to do that step rather quickly. Um, yeah, exactly. Since it's a bug. Exactly the same thing happened to me. A completely different hardware and software setup. So, yeah, and Macrium, it looks like it can do everything, but it, the setup, it doesn't take you through in a logical order, I didn't think. Mm. So it was a bit confusing. You yeah. had to follow a guide, which I guess you could do. Yeah. It was a little clunkier. Um, I personally didn't add much over the other two. So I don't know why you choose it potentially over your backup or VM. And then between those two, for me, it makes VM makes more sense for my purposes because it was much easier to set up. Really nice interface, very simple. Runs in the background nice and efficiently. Doesn't use, well, it uses barely anything when it's just doing a um, an incremental backup. So that that ticks all my boxes really. Yeah, I completely agree. If you're just if you're running a home setup, you've just got a NAS drive for your backup location. You're not worried about doing off-site backups. You're not worried about other people connecting in. You're not worried about sort of the scalability of adding loads of new clients. Mm -hmm. VM. I think VM would be my choice. Yeah. But I quite like the software behind and um, the server software behind your backup. I like that it's scalable. I like that you can control it all from the server. If you want to change a setting, you change it on the server and it deploys it to all the clients. Yeah. It's a lot more configurable, a lot more customizable as well. And funnily enough, I actually prefer both of them to crash plan anyway. Um, although it was easy at the time. Fair enough. So there it is. If uh, if you want a simple solution, we'd recommend VM. If you want something a bit more scalable, a bit more customizable, and you're running your own server, you haven't just got an S drive, then give your backup a try. Yep. And if for any reason neither of those solutions work for you, Macrium, once it's set up, is a fairly solid system. We wouldn't have reviewed it if it was if it wasn't worth using. Right, thanks for watching guys. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and uh, think about subscribing. If you've got any other backup software you want to suggest, or maybe even other videos you'd like us to do, uh, stick them down in the comments and we'll, we'll have a look at it. Yep, we'll do it. We'll make a video. It'll be good. Thank you. Bye.